Before you get into the real estate market, get clarity, perspective, and the information you need. I've been listening to you and I love your show. Right here with broker owner Dan Jemis, host of the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show. All right, 1222. What a gorgeous day out there. The sun is shining, Cass. I love it. Now, I don't know about you, but I we've been doing a lot of baseball games. So our our one of our our boys is in is in baseball. And um it's not travel, it's it's select. So it's just basically local stuff here. Sure. And uh oftentimes if you don't hear me on the show, it's because we're at a baseball game, one of his baseball games, and Joyce is happy to step in and, and help. Um but I've got to tell you, I have loved getting involved with kids' sports. It's been so much fun. Oh, awesome. Um, it's a hoot, right? I never yeah. played too many sports as a kid. Uh, we just didn't have the time, and my parents weren't, you know, it wasn't a huge thing for them. Yeah. Um, our boys have liked it since they were young, and we just, we love it. Hockey and baseball and soccer, and they get all into it. So it's fun. So and for it's those a fun right there, family event that you do 100%. together, right? Like, yes. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's yeah. really cool. We're really lucky to have it. So listen, uh, creating a multi-generational home cast, we talked about it. It's something that's really up and coming. We're seeing coming. more and more of it across the uh, North America, yep. right? Yep. Um, so what are some things that we can do and some things to kind of think about when planning a multi-generational home? So here are a couple of tips. We're going to start with space planning. So flexible floor plans uh, opt for open floor plans that can be easily adapted as family needs change. Sure. So th- the family will, you know, will shrink and will grow and you'll have kids and your grandkids and et cetera, et cetera. So plan for those things and, and give you some, so give yourself some room to kind of shift things around as, as need be. Yeah. Uh, consider including multi-purpose rooms that can serve different functions over time. Great. Uh, private living areas. So design separate living areas for different generations. Yes. Such as in-law suites or basement apartments. That's probably hugely yes. important. Yes. Sometimes I'm, I always ask people, I'm like, are you going to call me in five years and say, Cass, we've outgrown this space. <laughs> or Cass, we can't stand one another because there's no space, you know? No, that's funny. You know, and if you think about it, how, you know, there's been studies made for how long the typical person stays in a house. Mm-hmm. Five years is the average. Yeah. Five yeah. years. It's only five years. I think as prices continue to climb, it'll, it'll go, it'll get longer and longer. Yeah. But over the last 20 years, it's been five years has been the average in a home. Hmm. Um, so, uh, shared common spaces. So create spacious common areas like the kitchen and living room where the whole family can gather. Uh, use durable, easy to clean materials in those high traffic areas as well. So, sure. okay, all right, makes sense. Um, accessibility and safety. So, universal design principles. So, incorporate universal design features like wider doorways, lever handles, and no step entries. So, think about you know aging in a in a house, or if you get a multi generational, you'll have your parents or grandparents or whatever with yeah. you. Uh, and or you're going to age at some point. So you want to prep those homes for those things, right? Ensure that all the essential areas are accessible for family members with mobility issues. Uh, first floor bedrooms and bathrooms. Yes. In- we often see that now too. Yeah. A lot of people really request getting, you know, a main floor bedroom now. Yes. Um, so that they don't have to always necessarily do the stairs and that's keep right. that in mind too. So that's a smart idea. Yeah, makes sense. Um, let's see here. Equip bathrooms with safety features like grab bars and walk-in showers. Sure. Which is awesome. Um, and there's so many companies that, that will really help you transform a bathroom too. It's to come really such a long it way. Really has, there's, there's neat material out there. Like it's, it's really, it's neat what they've yep. got. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Um, okay. Non-slip flooring. So choose non-slip flooring materials through the home to prevent accidents. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Consider carpeting or rubber mats in areas where falls are more likely. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, privacy and noise control. So soundproofing. Use soundproofing materials in walls and floors to reduce noise between living areas. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. Install solid core doors to minimize sound transfer. So again, oftentimes in new construction, you'll see, um, you know, you won't see solid core doors. You'll see the hollow doors, yeah. right? Which yeah. really allow a lot of transfer of sound. So solid core doors for a few extra bucks will really give you that extra sound uh, yeah. attainment. Um, separate entrances. So if possible, design separate entrances for different living areas to provide privacy. Ensure that each entrance is well lit and secure. So again, a great entrance maybe, or a second yep. entrance through the garage. Yep. Sometimes um, you see where they've got their parents downstairs, yes. or you're living downstairs, and you're living on, you know, someone's on the main floor. Sure. Uh, private outdoor spaces. So create individual outdoor areas, such as patios or balconies, for each generation. Use landscaping to provide privacy between spaces. So I love that. Yeah. 
Um, again, all easier stuff to do too. Just yeah. you have to give it a bit of thought, but yep. some planning. But otherwise, uh, shared amenities. So shared kitchen. So design a spacious, well-equipped kitchen with ample storage and seating for a large family gatherings. Include features like double ovens and extra large refrigerators to accommodate multiple cooks. I think I would prefer separate spaces. You sure. know, like an in-law suite that like yeah. we talked about, right? Yeah, I something think like that. Would that be I think a would better. be uh, maybe laundry facilities. So include multiple laundry areas or a larger central laundry room to handle increased laundry. Laundry needs, sure. Uh, easily uh, ensure access to laundry facilities for all family members. Okay. Uh, home office space. So create dedicated home office spaces for family members who work from home or need study areas. Sure. Uh, financial considerations. Yeah. Absolutely. I guess it's important. Yep. Yep. Budgeting for renovations. So plan for uh, to budget for necessary renovations to make the home suitable for multi-generational living. Prioritize projects that enhance accessibility and privacy. So shared expenses. So maybe utilities are shared. Yep. You got to figure out how you're going to handle that. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, future-proofing the home. So plan for future needs, such as potential health issues or additional family members. Design spaces that can be easily modified as circumstances change. Yeah. So, uh, and last on the list, a legal and zoning issue. So make sure that you, know, that you have the proper zoning in uh, the area you're in to Permits allow for multi-use. Yep. 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 Um, and then emotional and social considerations. So communication, conflict resolution. So if, you know, one of the parties is too, too loud upstairs, well, how do you handle it, right? <laughs> yeah. is, is there a... Yeah. I would think if you're it's multi-generational that families should have a better idea on how to best to communicate. You'd you hope. would think. You'd hope. <laughs> You'd hope. <laughs> but how many families do we deal with that have yep. a lot of you yep. know, issues? Yep. We've even seen more additional dwellings. I, mind you, it's much more costly, but sometimes we've seen people with, you know, a bit bigger property and they the put in yeah, yep. the ADUs. We put, we've seen those in the back too, or people have converted garages, yes. you know, or they've made the upstairs of a garage. So re- some unique ideas to help them out. <laughs> the additional dwelling units, you're, you're probably looking at about a hundred and fifty to $200,000 yeah. for a smaller house in the yeah. backyard. Yeah. So it's still not super cheap, No, but it's an option. Yep. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, the property yep. purchase or et cetera, right? Depending on the longevity of, yeah. of what you're doing and your future plans of it, right? 100%. So 100%. Could be. So there you have it. There are some tips for, uh, you know, creating a multi-generational home. Huh. Good list. Oof. Good list. Mouthful. Yep. Uh, we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to come back. Cast in the next card for the Richmond Popcorn Company. Uh, and we are going to come back and talk about some pet-friendly home designs. Critters. So all kinds of fun topics yeah. today. I like Hopefully it. it's the friendly critters, not the mice and rats. But, oh. uh, you know, those, oh. those you know, pet-friendly uh, home design ideas. Okay, so that and lots more right here on the Dan Gemma's Real Estate Show.